Hallie Quinn Brown was an accomplished and acclaimed teacher, author, lecturer, elocutionist, and political activist. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Brown family home served as a station on the Underground Railroad. Leading a life of relative privilege, she was exposed at an early age to concern for education and human rights. In the field of education, Brown not only taught, but also utilized her talent as a speaker to promote Wilberforce University and raise funds for its continued growth. Her concern for women's rights and African-American civil liberties carried over into her adult life and influenced her later activism. In fact, Brown's active and passionate involvement in these movements placed her in the forefront of the late 19th and early 20th century struggles for reform and social change. As one scholar noted, the rich text of her life ensures her place in American history. Hallie Q. Brown began her teaching career shortly after her graduation from Wilberforce University in 1873. She spent her early career teaching those who had little or no opportunity to obtain an education. After the Civil War, for example, Brown went south to teach newly free slaves how to read and write, and during extremely difficult conditions. When she returned north, she worked with migrant black workers from the south, establishing an adult night school in Dayton, Ohio. In 1892, she was appointed Dean of Women at Tuskegee Institute. The following year, she accepted an appointment at Wilberforce University, serving as a professor of elocution until 1923. During this time, she also took summer courses at the Chautauqua Lecture School and developed an interest in elocution. Brown launched her career as an elocutionist, a form of public speaking that emphasizes gestures, vocal projection, and delivery in the early 1880s, first with a touring company organized by Wilberforce University and then as a solo performer. In addition to her lectures and recitals in the United States, Brown engaged in several extensive tours of Europe. She subsequently used her talents and popularity as a performer and speaker to raise funds for a number of projects, including a women's dormitory and library at Wilberforce University. Both Emory Hall and the Carnegie Library still stand today. I think Hallie Q. Brown is a great example of the efforts for self-help. So these are women who didn't want to sit around and wait for um, things to change on a big national level. So instead they would often just look around their own communities, see what things needed to be done, and get them started. So for her to start, you know, she looked around Wilberforce and saw that there wasn't a place for women to live while they were getting an education. Uh, and so that was one of the big reasons she started the fundraising for that dormitory. Her early themes centered on the life and culture of African Americans, including songs, folklore, and the poetry of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Temperance was another important early topic and the subject of many of her lectures. Later, African American civil rights and women's rights played a dominant role in her lectures. In the interest of these causes, Brown promoted two areas of special concern, equal access to education and political empowerment for blacks and women. She also spoke out strongly against lynchings and other acts of violence against African Americans. In the area of women's rights, Brown distinguished herself as a leader and made considerable contributions to early 20th century women's organizations. She was a founder of the National Association of Colored Women and helped form the Negro Women's National Republican League shortly after women won the right to vote in 1919. Brown is the first woman to actively campaign for an office in the African Methodist Episcopal Church's General Conference. Although unsuccessful in her bid, she continued to fight for women's equal rights within the church. This ideal that the woman's place was in the home, that was her sphere, and then the public sphere was the man's world. So that was something that um, women like Hallie Hugh Brown had to fight against, but they also were able to manipulate it. So to be able to say that um, my place in the home means that I'm very important because I'm helping to educate the next generation. So I need to have an excellent education and I need to be able to pass that on to my children. Brown is the author of numerous books, including Elocution and Physical Culture, Bits and Odds, Our Women, Past, Present, and Future, and Tales My Father Told. 
I think the great tragedy is that women writers weren't remembered. So women writers were writing through the 19th century. It's incredible the output that they had. Um, for one reason, that was a career that was easily attainable for women. So it didn't take much to start writing. It was easy to get going. Um, and impressively, many women were being published in national magazines and uh, across the country. So um, women were writing uh, fiction, short stories, histories, biographies um, across all genres. It's, it's unfortunate that they're not remembered today for what they wrote. And Hallie Q. Brown is a great example. She wrote um, Homespun Heroines, and that's a collection of biography of 60 notable African-American women. And without that, there are many of those women we wouldn't remember today. Noted more for its association with Brown than its architecture, Homewood Cottage was a small, rectangular, two-story frame home with a large front porch. The Brown family purchased the property in the early 1870s, and Hallie Q. Brown resided there all of her adult life. After her death, the home served as a residence hall for women faculty of Central State University and was named to the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. It was destroyed by the April 1974 tornado. The Hallie Q. Brown Library is named after her because of her important role with education. Throughout her career, uh, education was central to what she did. And um, she, as part of national work, uh, had a scholarship fund for women. Um, and she worked tirelessly to promote the needs of African Americans in education. The podcasts are a project of Central State University archivist Sheila Darrell and English professor Amy Hobbs Harris and funded by the Central State University Office of the President and Office of Sponsored Programs and Research. Visit the university website at centralstate.edu.